I would say this about Russell Wilson. Here, I, th I think he is the smartest, most instinctive quarterback I've ever seen. Yo, what's up, guys? This time we're going to talk about how Russell Wilson got to this point in his career and basically just tell the story of Russell Wilson. So if you like these kind of videos, let me know in the comment section and make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Let's get right into it. Russell Wilson was drafted to the Seattle Seahawks in 2012 in the third round, and he went six amongst quarterbacks after names like Andrew Luck, Robert Griffin III, Ryan Tannehill, Brandon Whedon, and Brock Osweiler. Four of them are no longer in the NFL. Russ came up at the same time as, menacing, as the menacing Legion of Boom defensive juggernaut that starred Cam Chancellor, Earl Thomas, Bobby Wagner, and Richard Sherman. Also dominant during that stretch was Marshawn Lynch, who was one of the best running backs from the years of 2011 to 2014. After winning the starting job, winning some games to make a playoff berth, but eventually losing in the second round to the number one seed, Falcons after a heroic comeback failed. What made Russell Wilson such a household name is how he was unlikely, how he anchored the team, how he was elite in escapability, and just elite in playmaking as a whole. Although his defensive counterpart Richard Sherman was always chirping, asking Tom Brady, you mad bro, or calling himself Optimus Prime prior to facing Megatron, or even when he said the great quote that he said to Michael Crabtree. I ask you the final play, take me through it. Well, I'm the best corner in the game. When you try me with a sorry receiver like Crabtree, that's the result you're going to get. Don't you ever talk about me. Who was talking about you? Crabtree, don't you open your mouth about the best. Or you're going to shut it for you real quick. L.O.B. All right, before... And Joe, back over to you. All right, well, we saw... And honestly, the Seahawks just had that swagger and had stars on both sides of the field with a very good head coach to go along with them and Pete Carroll, who is still the head coach of the Seahawks to this day. The Seahawks were definitely one of the best teams that we've seen in the past decade, so this story is interesting one for sure. In 2014, the Seahawks held the number one defense and anchored the saying, defense wins championships. That same year, they faced Peyton Manning, who just had came off a monstrous season. And when they faced off with them in the Super Bowl, they absolutely embarrassed them, despite Peyton Manning having one of his best seasons ever throwing for 55 touchdowns and plenty of passing yards. And honestly, that Broncos team in general just had one of the greatest offenses we've seen in the NFL in entire history. And they had, obviously, one of the best game managers, if you want to call him that, for a great defense and running game that they had. And he threw two touchdowns in the Super Bowl, of course. So at this point, the identity of this team laid with the defense and the league-leading rushing attack for Marshawn Lynch. The following year in the playoffs, Russell faced a 19-7 deficit with just about five minutes left when he threw an interception, giving the Seahawks less than a 1% chance to win the game. Thankfully, of course, they had Legion of Boom on their side, which was still a thing, and they got a quick stop, and Russell Wilson clutched up and got a quick touchdown and drove the Hawks down the field again after Legion of Boom got another stop. And this time, Marshawn Lynch punched it in, and it was 19-22. to But after A-Rod led the Packers down at the end of the regulation to tie the game up, it was on Russell Wilson to deliver, and he blew the game manager narrative out the water. Now, when I refer to him as a game manager, I don't want to compare him to guys like Jimmy G or Teddy Bridgewater or things of that nature. Russ had to make a play, and he did. He threw one of his coveted deep balls to Jermaine Curse and led the Seahawks to a back-to-back -back Super Bowl berth. This time, they were facing another all-time great quarterback, which was Tom Brady. This game started off slow. There were no scoring in the first quarter, but... Once the second quarter began, we saw the greatness of these two teams. Brady began driving and threw a pick to Jeremy Lane, who was returning the pick but got tackled by Julian Edelman. At that time, he had broke his he had broke his fall and ended up breaking his wrist on top of that. And he tore his ACL. So losing Jeremy Lane was a big thing for the Seahawks as he was one of their best corners after Richard Sherman. After this, Tom Brady eventually scored, making it a 7-0 lead for the Patriots. And Russ was struggling at first, but was able to come finally complete his first pass in the second quarter of the game. And they went back to back until it was 14-14 at halftime. Eventually in the fourth quarter, the Seahawks were down and had worked their way up to the one yard line and had the best running back in football, which was Marshawn Lynch. At least the best scoring running back in football in Marshawn Lynch. But Pete Carroll wanted to throw off the Patriots defense by going for a pass play. And we all know how that went. It backfired. Malcolm Butler was able to make a fantastic play at the end zone and pick off the ball, which ended the game, essentially, for the Seahawks. And Russell Wilson was not able to get 
his second Super Bowl win. Play clock at five. Pass is intercepted at the goal line by Malcolm Butler. Now, understandably, Pete Carroll got significant backlash for this. If you have the best scoring running back in football and you're on the one yard line and he essentially cannot be stopped, you have to run the ball to Marshawn Lynch no matter what. Even if the defense expects it, you have to run the ball there. But even Russell Wilson got some backlash for this as people were saying that he should have audibled. He knew that he had the best running back as well. So, I mean, honestly, this was one of the first times that Russell Wilson faced criticism. But it really didn't go too far as Russell Wilson was a fan favorite on the Seahawks. Just a few months later, after the defeat, Russell Wilson got a contract extension as he proved himself to be a franchise quarterback and got a very high payday with him being the second most paid player in the NFL under just Aaron Rodgers. In the 2015 season, he had one of his best seasons, having 34 touchdowns and only seven interceptions to go along with the best passer rating in the league. Although his season was cut short by the Panthers in the divisional round, the Panthers ultimately made the Super Bowl, and the next year Russ continued to prove why he's a superstar by upping his passing yards and still leading the Seahawks to number one seed in their division and fourth overall in the NFC. Fast forwarding to the 2017 season, Russell Wilson has already established himself as a superstar, and he's became a household name at this point. After the great run of the Seahawks with the Legion of Boom, Marshawn Lynch and his Skittles, um, Russell Wilson, who was a great quarterback at the time, they had everything going for them. They had the 12th man, which was a uh, ode to their fans. Um, it seemed that this Seahawks team has really depleted because at this time, he ended up leading the league in passing touchdowns despite having one of the worst O-lines in the league. Obviously, like I said, he had a depleting running back core a good but no longer dominant defense, and his team really did miss the playoffs this year, despite the great season from Russ. After this, it became rough for the Seahawks, who really just starred Russell Wilson at this point as he lost the majority of the LOB. Marshawn and other players were past their primes, but Russ continued to be great and secured a humongous extension in 2019 of a four-year $140 million with an over $60 million signing bonus which was obviously the largest contract in NFL history. After some great seasons and more disappointing early playoff losses, Russell Wilson was still a consensus top five quarterback in football because how he was able to overcome uncertainties and a pretty depleted team, but especially his whole line. And for him to put up the numbers that he did during his career with an old line that was really, really just bad for the most of his career, it was definitely an ode to Russell Wilson, to his greatness and how... He's able to play make despite having a bad O-line. To aid this point, Russell Wilson, since he has been drafted, has been sacked the most times in the NFL. Getting all the way to 2021 now, Russ has been an Iron Man essentially his entire career, which means that he really hasn't been injured much. And he was on a 10-year span of 150 games where he did not miss a single game. While there was always speculation and seeming discomfort between Russ and the Seahawks, it all came to fruition after the 2021 season, and Russell Wilson was traded. Russell Wilson was traded. Since he has been traded, fans, analysts, Broncos Nation, everyone has been very optimistic in a resurgence and an overall bright future for the Broncos, who seem to have all the other positions figured out, which whether it's the D-line, the secondary, the O-line, the passing attack, the running backs. Um, the Broncos really have a talented team, uh, and they thought that they would just need a quarterback to elevate them to the next level, which was really Super Bowl contention. But it seems like that is not the case at the moment. At this point, the Broncos have failed to reach their expectations. They are just 2-4, and four, losing three straight, and have failed to score over 20 in five of their first six games as their lowest point total is nine versus the Colts in the loss. At this point, Russell Wilson has thrown five touchdowns and three interceptions with a below 60% completion rate and 83 passer rating, which are both the lowest in his career by far. While there is a question of if Russ is just bad or is he getting used to new scenery or is it to blame on the new head coach, Nathaniel Hackett? But at this point, Russell Wilson doesn't have a very good case. He hasn't done his part and he hasn't been able to fulfill expectations that fans and the NFL world 
expected of him as a former great quarterback in this league. The story of Russell Wilson has quickly diminished and the Broncos were supposed to be his fresh start. A new way to regain his legacy, essentially. While he's always been great, his playoff success has not been there after his two Super Bowl runs back to back. It's seeming right now that he's going to have trouble even making the playoffs. So the story of Russell Wilson is definitely still being written. So we must see how it is going to turn out because as of now, at age 33, he seems to be declining already. Thank you guys for listening to this video. It's a pretty quick one, but I just wanted to talk about Russell Wilson and how he's really disappointing a lot of the NFL world. Hopefully he can pick it up, but I mean, we'll just have to see. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Drop a comment and I'll see you next time.